joining us. This is the AMA Ask Me Anything questionnaire. My name is Stephanie Dano. I'm the executive director of Lifespan.io. And here with us, we have Lisa, Lisa from Sens Research Foundation. So a little bit of an introduction on her. She previously has served as SRF's, which is Sens Research Foundation, executive director. She worked closely with the organization preceding CEOs for more than a decade, dedicating her expertise towards building all aspects of the organization. With an educational background in life sciences and industry experience in microbiology, stem cells, and flow cytometry, Lisa joined SRF in 2010 as a volunteer in the laboratory. She transitioned in organ into organizational administration in early 2012, and with a strong focus on finance and operations, advanced into greater roles that balance the financial research, educational, and outreach operations of the organization. A Bay Area transplant from the Midwest, she is fully dedicated to advancing rejuvenation biotechnologies and guiding SRF forward as a significant and leading edge contributor in this rapidly growing field. So we are thrilled to have you today. Um, there are questions that are going to be coming in, and I'm excited to kick it off if you don't mind. Uh, Lisa, what are some of the donations currently being spent on right now? Um, as always, SRF is research focused, so we try to spend over 50% of our budget every year on research. Um, it's imperative that we fund the research that is damage repair related to age related disease, um, following our SENS, the Strategies for Engineered Negligible Senescence Strategy. Um, that has never changed, it never will change, and the bulk of our funding by far goes towards that. So we have internal research programs right now. We have three programs in-house, the Poptosens, Replenisens, and Mitosens, and they all have sub-projects. And we have external research at places like Albert Einstein and Abraham, just to name a couple, where we also fund research there. And as always, we're looking for more research opportunities, people who are doing work in our field. So if you are interested, or if you do work in that field, please submit a letter of intent through our website, um, sense.org. And we will review at our research development committee any proposed research to see if it fits within our paradigm. And if we can fund it, we will. Fantastic. Thank you for answering that's the that. Vast, that's the vast majority of our money. Um, I should say the other donor funds go towards education. We have an, a really robust education program to grow up the next generation of scientists, which I think is incredibly important. If we want to make real lasting change, we can't just work with the people we have. We have to train them young. Um, we have some outreach activities and then, of course, our administrative side that we try to keep as small as possible. Nobody wants to spend money on indirects. Understood. Another question is, is your current research the same type of research approach SRF has been following since its founding days or has it changed in any way? We really haven't changed. We've always been a damage repair approach research foundation. So that focus on aging, specifically on how to tackle aging in a, from a damage repair concept um, has stayed constant. Now we have funded from the early days, a lot of basic research, research that wasn't funded largely by other institutions. That, that still st stays true as well. We do look at translational research though. Um, it's not just enough to do basic research. While the basic research is important, particularly because they have such a hard time getting funded, you also have to fund the translational stuff because otherwise, how is it going to get onto the market? You know, we're not just interested in the science behind aging. We're interested in curing aging, right? And you do that by getting real translatable research and technologies onto the market in a meaningful way. So we are also looking at that. And I don't want to say that that's changed because we've done that historically, um, but it has become more of a focus lately. Um, and by lately, I mean the last three to five years. Thank you. Another question, is the mission of SRF today the same mission the foundation was originally created for? Yes, definitely, yes. Um, our entire team is dedicated to our mission as it stands. I've been with SRF since 2012. I was a volunteer in 2010. So I've been with the organization almost since its founding in 2009. A lot of our staff have been with us for a very long time as well. Uh, Maria Antreguez, who's here, is our director of outreach. She's been with us since the founding. Um, our, our mission has been what it always has been, which is to cure age-related disease, um, again, through a damage repair approach. 
and it's not it's not going to change. That's exactly what we want to be doing. That's exactly where we think the best bang for our buck is and the thing that will make the biggest impact in aging. Got it. Okay. What's the process of deciding how funds are spent, by the way? So there's a budget process, like any organization. Um, oftentimes the directors or the managers of their programs will submit a budget at the end of the year. And we sort it out, or set, send it to the board for approval. The board to date has never not approved a budget that was prepared by staff. Um, I expect that to continue, but they do review it to make sure that we're not um, egregiously spending where we shouldn't be, um, which we don't course. Um, for funding decisions in terms of research as to what programs get what amount of funding or when we start new projects, that is based through our research development committee. So we receive LOIs, like I had mentioned previously, um, through online, through contacts that we have internally. They submit proposals for research. We review them in our committee and they all get scored based on their scientific feasibility, on their impact for aging, um, on how cost effective they are, on what their timeframes look like, um, on even on their organizational impact to us on whether or not um, the collaboration will bring benefit to the aging space and to us as an organization. And all those scores get posted and there's about historically five to eight of us who sit on that committee and it's a vote. So you have scores, anything above a certain threshold, we don't usually look at. Um, people can champion those, but they often don't because they score so low. Scores um, that are above a certain threshold, we vote on. And if majority vote and gets quorum, it passes and we ask them for a full proposal. If that full proposal passes snuff similar to the LOI, it gets funded. And that's that's been this way for probably about six or seven years now. It's, it's a very collaborative funding effort. Can you tell us a little bit more about how the board of directors are involved in decisions around money and how it's spent as it relates to the question you just answered? Sure. Um, the board of directors doesn't have any input into our research funding decisions. They approve annually a, a maximum amount for our research. So when we put forth a budget, again, those budget numbers come from staff internally. We put forth the budget number. Um, and they say, yeah, that sounds about right for what you should be spending on research. And then that money essentially is our cap. Really, we try to spend within 10% high or low of what the board approves. And then the RDC has full discretion on that, on that spending for research. The board really has no control or even real access. I mean, they're allowed to sit on the RDC if they so choose as a non-voting member, if they're interested in the process or if they're interested in a particular um, research track that we're looking at but they don't have voting and they never will. So those are really left up to our senior scientists on staff. Thank you. So I know there's a lot that's been going on with SENS in the last couple of months. What, what would you like to tell the audience that they might not already know? Oh goodness. Um, I, I mean, I would hope the donors would know this, but I, I feel like um, if you are a donor to SRF and you ever have concerns about how we are spending your donations, I really hope that you reach out to us directly. We are willing to talk with anybody for any length of time. Happy to have a call. Happy to have a video chat. If we can't do it in person, happy to have you visit our, our laboratory so you can see for yourself exactly what your donations are going towards. Um, that is, it's imperative to us that we have that transparency with you so that you know that your money is going directly towards the research and towards the work that we're doing in aging. So I, I really hope that you can have that confidence in us and that we can prove that to you. But if you don't talk to us, we we can't we can't share this with you as much as we'd like. Um, I'd also like you guys to know that we are we are doing our best with with all the trials and tribulations we've been handed lately. Um, our staff are incredibly dedicated, really passionate, intelligent wonderful people. I mean, our, we have a staff now of almost 30, and I'd say about 18 of them have been with us for many years. And we are all just completely dedicated to this mission and to our organization and the work that we have before us to cure age as a disease. And I, I really hope that you take the time to get to know us, especially at venues like this at the EARD conference, when there's so many of our staff present, where you can reach out, make connections and contact everybody. 
reach out to our scientists, talk to them about what they're doing and why they're doing it. Reach out to myself, to Maria, talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that's, that's really, I just, I hope you see it. Yeah. And it's one thing I really like about the longevity space is the accessibility and the collaboration. Honestly, you know, people are driven by curiosity and how we respond to that is everything. And so whoever's listening, please don't hesitate to reach out to anyone at Sends. Also here at Lifespan.io, questions are always welcome. You know, this is a, an entire movement that's driven by how curious can you actually be. Another question for you, Lisa, any latest developments that you're excited about, internal or external, that maybe we don't know too much about yet? Oh, well, the new project, the new one internally, the new thread is Replenisense run by Hadi Reba, Dr. Hadi Reba. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, my my personal goal for SENS is to have every one of our seven strands of SENS represented at SRF internally. We've never had that before. We've never had the means to have that before. But I think it's imperative that we have experts, world-class experts in their fields on those seven strands present physically at SRF in a way that we can really leverage their strengths. And so now we have three, which is fantastic. I'm very excited about that. I'm also really excited about our partnership with Vita Dow with one of our Apoptosense programs. That's what I said we just announced it. Um, it's been in the works for a while and we're really, really excited to do, to partner with them and to see where we can do future, future collaborations. Can you tell us a little bit more about your upcoming virtual event? Oh, that is, oh, Maria's gonna kill me. It's September 2nd and 3rd. Um, it's a great event, please come. It's all of our, it's all of our research. It's our, our education program presenting. It's all of our researchers internally presenting. If you feel like you haven't had enough information about what we're doing with your donations or just in general, come talk to us. This is, it can be the perfect opportunity. The platform is brilliant. It's really brilliant and it's beautiful. And you get to come around and kind of walk around as an avatar. If you weren't at our previous donor event, um, it's, it's really cool. Um, and you come, you come talk to us. I mean, we'll be there. A couple of our board members will probably be there as well. Um, but really, if you if you can come, come learn about our research, our external um, researchers are also going to be presenting. So it's really the whole breadth of our research will be presented there. Really, really great opportunity. Yeah. Um, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention was our um, our new building. We're in the same building, but it's expanded. I'm really excited about that. We're, we've broken ground. It's almost ready to be moved in. I think we're just expanding right now our security system. And then we're going to be moving into the new space. Huge vivarium space. Lots more cell culture. It's really, we've really more than doubled our actual laboratory space. So it's mostly, a, again, a research expansion. So that's also very cool. We will be holding at some point a, um, like a lab opening. So if you're in the Bay Area, please come see us. We'll be advertising when that's going to be, and you can check out our new space. Fantastic. Now, I guess an open-ended question from me, you know, what is one thing about the organization that people don't know that they really should know? It's a collaborative effort. We're not, we're not run by one person. The decisions. I'm the CEO, but I don't. I don't make all the decisions by a long shot. Um, I make sure that we fill every room that we're in making decisions with people who are in the know, who are experts in their field, who have real value to contribute, and it's extremely collaborative. All of us. We work together really hard to make this mission work, and that's not. That's not a new thing. That's been around from day one. It's always SRF has always been a collaborative effort. It always will be a collaborative effort solving aging as a disease has to be a collaborative effort. We have to build together. We have to grow together. We can't be in competition with one another. We have to work together to reach this goal or it's never going to happen. And we, it's, it's a, it might be a little trite to say it that way to talk about, you know, breaking down the silos and really working together collaborati collaboratively to build this better future. But it's true. And we're trying to model that internally as much as we model it externally. Um, we, we showcase this in, in how we make decisions. We showcase this in how we work with our researchers internally and externally. We showcase this in the students that we're training and how we train them. We showcase this and when we're making deals with people to get this, this basic research translatable, that we 
take lower stakes than really any investor should, right? When we make investments, we take low stakes, not because we don't want to have good returns, but because it's so much more important for that research to get off the ground than it is for us to make a buck, right? Um, and that's that's really our mindset is this is this is a team project and it has to be a team project. Otherwise we're not gonna succeed. So I hope everybody works with us to make, help make this happen so that we can be a better effective team. Honestly, as I mentioned before about the longevity community, the, I think the nature of its collaboration is pretty inherent in that if one person or organization succeeds in any way, everybody on the planet succeeds. And so we are incentivized to work together and it's very different from how other industries are set up. And so I think that's a really exciting aspect of what everyone here is working on. And so whether that means collaborating with other scientists or engineers or people in completely different industries just to get, you know, prompted by something new that might inspire you to think about solving a problem a different way. You know, I encourage everyone to start kind of thinking outside the box and figuring out new ways to work with others because this is not an easy problem to solve. And I want to thank you, Lisa, for joining us today on behalf of SENS Research Foundation. Any closing words? We've covered it. Thank you, Stephanie. I really appreciate your time. And also, Lifespan.io has been really fantastic in working with us as well. We really look forward to working with you guys in the future more. Yeah, same here. And we are really appreciate that you've joined us today and been one of our sponsors. And if anyone else has any questions, I think Lisa and myself, we've made it quite clear that the door is open for conversation for questions. So reach out on any platform, swap card, LinkedIn, otherwise, you know, we're all here to try and work together and solve some big, big challenging problems. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the conference. And again, thank you all for being here and for supporting us, both of our organizations. Thank you.